Hello, welcome back. This is the second session of this short course about assemblage. And today we're going to be looking at using assemblage to create a landscape picture. Here's an example of mine. Now, this is quite popular with, uh, with our students. So I'm going to show you quite a few examples on the slideshow that students have done in past courses before we start. first of all let's have a look at um, some possible materials so these are some that i'm going to use today um, some tissue paper from a shoe box some string some old rusty nails a bit of hessian a bit of some netting off of a fruit packet some bits of wood corrugate paper some textured wall papers some stones and a card work on card for this piece of work i'm working on white card to make it easier for you to see but it could just as easily be brown card corrugated card bit of cardboard box and i've got two about the same size that means that what i can do is i can play around with how i want to arrange the materials on one and then easily transfer them onto the other one to stick down so i'm going to make a start on that now so I've been playing around with uh, a number of elements to try and decide my composition and uh, I've probably put in more than necessary just so I can show you uh, a few techniques but what I'd like you to notice is how this has been built up in layers starting with the very fine texture of what will be crinkle tissue paper onto a slightly bigger texture of wallpaper, then stronger textures, and then towards the front, bigger, sort of lumpier, bolder shapes and materials. What I'd normally suggest is do this on one piece of card and then transfer it to another, or take a photograph of it. And I'm gonna be working for a little photograph up the top that I can keep looking at for my composition. So let me take those, all the bits, off now. Let's move it to one side and let's talk about sticking this down. So the first thing I'm going to be using is PVA glue. Had to pause for a minute then because I couldn't get the lid off the glue. Um, PVA glue is lovely and strong. Uh, first of all I want to stick down the tissue. So what I'm going to do, I know where it's going to go. I'm going to put neat glue straight all over the surface. I'm using an old brush, a lot easier to use an old brush. Now I'm going to apply the tissue over and wet my brush so that the glue on it is a little bit more diluted. And I'm going to work back over the top. And as I do, sort of pushing the tissue around, squashing it too, so I get crinkles. This little method of doing it by pushing it around with a brush rather than trying to crinkle it with your hand means you don't get really horrible sticky fingers. So getting that quite flat. And then my next layer was a little bit of hessian which went across here. So put the glue on neat, nice and thick. But when I apply the hessian that way around, I can press it down with the brush and get it to stick really well. And the glue is squidging all the way through. My next layer was this sort of hill shape with the um, wallpaper. Now, because the wallpaper is non-porous, 
I can put the glue straight onto the back of it. Again, be generous with the glue. I'm using it neat. The only time I dilute it is with tissue paper. Okay, right to the edge. And it goes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to continue sticking on those layers, uh, sticking on the wallpaper and the corrugated card. Okay, so that's the easy bit stuck down. I'm now going to apply this netting, which is a little bit trickier. So, lots and lots of PVA all over the surface. Really everywhere, really smear that on. And then I've got to work more glue over it. And you see it keeps lifting. Be patient with it. Just every time load your brush with glue, pressing it down. It will stick eventually. Okay, <laughs> you see what I mean? It's got a life of its own. I'll stick that down properly in a minute. I've now got other bits to stick down, which are also quite tricky. Um, I had three nails just sticking out the top. Don't ask me why I like nails. Um, I could just put lots of glue underneath it, um, but that doesn't tend to stick it very well. So what I'm going to do is take a very small piece of tissue. Remember, it, this is still quite gluey from earlier. I'll put a little bit more glue in the background there. I'm going to put an oh, even thin small strip, I think. Strip of tissue over the top. Wet my brush. So I'm using diluted glue and then press the tissue over the top. That tissue layer will hold my nails in place. As it dries, it will be virtually invisible. Same with string. If you want to attach string, it can be very difficult to get it to stay in place. If you use this technique, it becomes a lot easier. But make sure you do just use very small strips a little strip at a time don't be tempted to put big chunks of tissue on it just doesn't work so well now we move on to the heavier bits of wood now how did that go on there that was like that Oops. must have been that way around and that was like that and the stones as well for this you need to have a stronger glue or a lot of patience. It does take quite a while to get these things to stick. I like to use um, something like a hard as nails. Oh, that's upside down. There you go. Hard as nails. It does come in um, bottles like this. No more nails, hard as nails. So you don't necessarily have to have an applicator. Or you can buy something like um, a contact adhesive, or any strong glue. The key with this, though, because they're irregular shapes, is you do need to be fairly generous. So I'm going to have a nice squirt of that glue in there. That's it. And I'm going to apply this glue directly onto my object with well, it's a lollipop stick. Noting where it touches. It doesn't touch everywhere. It touches there. And back here, put it on thick and put it, put it, oops, put it on thin. How did that happen? Get back in there. There you go. Hmm. A little bit more, I think, at the top. Make sure you're quite generous. Press that on. And you'll notice, we well, you may not be able to see from the video, but a little bit squirted out around there. You can clean it up if you want to or leave it. Um, similarly with the stones, uh, let me just check where these went now. Oh, that was the first one coming about, about here, wasn't it? So with this, lots of glue on the back. Lots of it. Just 
through. So make sure it is squidging out so you know that you're really sticking it well. Okay, I'm going to carry on sticking my bits down now um, and I will see you in a few minutes. So I've glued everything down and there's a couple of things I'd like to you to notice before I move on. Um, the first thing is that things haven't gone exactly in the same place as I uh, as I originally arranged them. There's nothing wrong with improvising and changing things as you're going along and making little tweaks and so on. The second thing is that in several places I've gone right over the edge of the card. I actually quite like that part of it, having these extra edges that sort of stick out and so on. Now, I want to get ready to paint this. There are some areas which will be fine taking the paint straight away, like the tissue and the, the, the white uh, wallpaper. There's other areas where I quite like the colour as it is, in terms of the stones, but this brown and purple, and to some extent the, the wood, I'd like to be able to be a bit more flexible with colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint those areas with some white emulsion. Not the most interesting part of the video, so I will pause it and once it's uh, it's all dried, painted and dried, I will show you the next steps. So now I've painted the bits that I wanted to be white and I've uh, I've let it dry, I can start thinking about applying colour. And the key to success with colour with uh, with assemblage relief like this is to recognize that you've got two different levels you've got the groove and you've got the raised surface and try and apply different colors to those areas which is what i'm going to do so i have a tendency to start with the background lots of really bold color um you look here it's strong bands of color through the picture this one a bit more of a muted limited palette so uh, the blues into greens and a little bit of hints of browns towards the bottom but much more limited this one on the other hand a rainbow of color bands of colors one blend into the next in a rainbow fashion so blue into turquoise and green, into yellow, into orange, into red, into uh, sort of magenta and purples. And finally, this one, which where the colours are quite random. The the reason for the colouring in here escapes me. I just it just took my fancy. And assemblage it, it is important to recognise or allow it to, to lead you uh, in whichever way it sort of suggests, to go with the flow a little bit. Um, it isn't like traditional painting where you are making the paint uh, bend your will and look like things. What you're trying to do is get a balance between you, the materials and what they suggest, um, and the sort of image that you're trying to, to get. So I'm going to make a start. Now, my first layer, I want it to be quite watery to get right into the groove. I could use watered down acrylic. I could use watercolor. I could use something like Amalinky paints. I'm going to use inks because I like how strong and bright they are. So I'm going to start off with that sky. You can't see at the moment the, very well the, um, the creases in the tissue. But I'm just wetting. That sky first of all it's quite nice and wet I've only got very limited colors with the inks as well all I'm going to do I'm just going to put it into the water and let it do its own thing a little bit just run about a bit a bit more along there just a little bit more water in there just encourage it And let it sort of settle into you know, around those grooves. Try not to tilt it up too much because otherwise you won't want to see what I'm doing. Just encourage it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, 
quite reasonable. You can sort of see the texture beginning to come out already. I'll get a little bit in there too. Just put the two white around those. And now bands of colour. I think I'm going to go for a little bit of purple in this background here. Just in that area. And maybe greens in this next one. So put some what greens a bit bright, isn't it? Put some of that in there. I'm going to add some yellow to it. Oh, even brighter. Brilliant. Don't worry if it's very bright. See, I can tone it down later. Just working that through. I just put a little bit of blue in there just to get a bit of variety in that colour. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, yeah, a little bit bright. Oh, that was strong there. That's okay. Play with it a little bit. And what about my next layer? Ooh. But, uh, a slightly darker sort of green here. A bit of blue mixed into some brown. Again, I'll keep, I'm going to keep it so it sort of flows in. Let's go into that brown now. You notice that on top of the acrylic, the colour isn't quite as strong. On top of the acrylic, sorry, the emulsion, I should be saying. It tends to sink in just a little bit. I'm going to carry on blocking these colours in and dry it off and show you the next step. So now I've laid my base colours on, I can begin to work back into it. And I've got, I'm going to work with acrylic paints. I've got um, some black, some uh, burnt sienna, some yellow, some blue, some white. I think that will do. We'll see how we go. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is address this little bit of leakage here, which I don't really want. So I'm going to just work back into the sky a little bit. I'm using a, quite a very dry brush. Just working in and just adding a little bit of lightness down the bottom, around the horizon line. Similarly, you want to get a little bit of contrast into these layers. So a little bit of white. I'm going to start at the bottom, a fair amount, just sort of lightening that so that it just comes to the layer of the next one so it stands out separate from it. See that working? Just help separate the two layers a little bit. I'm using ever such a small amount of paint on the brush. Just enough to pick out that layer a little bit lighter on that edge. What do I'm a little bit worried that's still wet, but I don't think it matters. Let me just see. Tiny amount of paint. That's it. just sort of glancing and catching the top areas. Give that a little bit more lightness there. Now, looking at that, and I think that was just a little bit too white, so I'm going to mix the white with a little tiny bit of blue. So I've got this sort of light blue colour here. I'm going to wipe that brush back because there's loads of paint on it. Wipe it off, get a tiny amount of the paint. I just dry brush again with that blue so I get a bit more of a subtle contrast. That's better. Similarly, here I think it's just a little bit of yellow 
into the white so it's a sort of lighter green and start to just work that edge with a little bit of dry brushing to bring it out so I get a bit of contrast in there so those background layers you can see that starts to make them stand out a little bit more on the layers towards the foreground, again, I'm going to use this dry brushing technique. The brush is dry in a little bit of paint, but in a little bit more subtle way. And first of all, I've got to decide which direction the light is coming from. I think the light is coming from this direction. So I think I'm going to stick with that sort of slightly light blue to start with. And I'm going to dry brush along these catching keeping the brush just moving in one direction just catching these edges there's a little bit of light Similarly across here And maybe keep that going all the way down to that texture down there, which is a bit wet there. So I'm just catching the very top of the texture. You get the texture really starting to show up much, much more. Get in there, don't miss any bits. Easy to miss those bits in there. I want to go with a dark colour coming back the other way so I think I'm going to mix a little bit of brown and a little bit of black just so it's a bit darker you want a tiny bit of paint on the brush so wipe it back and then just get a little bit of it. and then in the other direction I'm going to start to dry brush darkness so you get a contrast in there whoops put my finger in the white paint contrast of light and dark developing in the picture We'll change the colour a little bit down here and work back into it a little bit with the acrylic. A bit thicker. A little bit of white in there too. And I can continue that process uh, if I want to dry it off, work back into the grooves with the watered down colour, with the uh, fluid colour like the inks or watered down acrylics and the surface with, uh, with dry brushing with the acrylics. So I'm going to spend another five minutes on that. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. Perhaps could work on it a little bit more to get some subtlety, but you've got, you can see the contrast of light and dark as it builds into the piece of work. Uh, there's now going to be a short slideshow showing you other pictures images of things that people have made um, using this assembly technique uh, and then I will tell you a little bit about the next session. Next session, we're going to look at more abstract compositions. We're going to look at the rules of, uh, of composition to help you think about how you would create more abstract compositions. And I'm going to be going a little bit deeper. Uh, this is an example of one of my pieces of work. I hope you enjoyed today's session. And if you do Facebook, please do post pictures of what you've achieved 
on the Art for All Facebook page. Details coming up now. Bye-bye.